Good morning, everybody, and uh, uh, thank you for uh, having me for this uh, for this discussion. Um, so, when when it comes to the implementation, went wrong to the with the implementation of uh, of commitments. I I think the previous panel covered quite some ground, especially Katarzyna. Uh, it is difficult to add to the to the points she made. But what I would like to touch upon now uh, is uh, uh, to deal more squarely with the elephant in the room. Um, the Charter of Paris was talking about uh, uh, unity uh, or, or in the OSC, about uh, a new beginning, about solidarity across Europe. And in fact, in the early 90s, uh, we saw uh, a space, a new space within which we could really operate. And in that space, the OSC, uh, the CSC first, and then the OSC were, was thriving. It developed um, mechanisms, institutions, uh, field operations, and uh, engaged in relation uh, to a number of uh, uh, rather unexpected uh, uh, um, issues that emerged from, uh, uh, from the Cold War. But dealing with this legacy, in fact, uh, uh, showed progressively uh, that the divisions had not been overcome. Uh, in fact, in many cases, it even uh, uh, provoked uh, more, uh, more divisions. And over time, we saw the, uh, the community in the OSC uh, reorganizing itself uh, along lines that were, uh, in the end, uh, geopolitical. We saw the, the, the evolution and the institutional uh, evolution uh, in, in the OSC space uh, uh, along uh, uh, Euro-Atlantic, European, uh, Eurasian uh, uh, groupings that, in the end, were uh, competing with each other and were, were antagonistic and were uh, uh, putting forward uh, uh, the policies that were not uh, uh, homogeneous in a way. Uh, so it, uh, we ended up at the end of the 90s with, uh, um, uh, with an organization within uh, the OSC space uh, of, uh, um, of the security structures uh, that was not uh, uh, reflecting in a way the vision uh, that we had seen uh, uh, emerging uh, from the end of Cold War and, uh, and reflected in the, uh, in the, Paris, uh, in the Paris Charter. Uh, this, this division, however, uh, uh, did not uh, stop uh, the OSC from, uh, from operating, even though uh, I have to say I, I was present at the time as having chaired the negotiations on the CFP uh, um, uh, adaptation, uh, the, the Istanbul summit, and that was probably the last uh, uh, really successful summit where a number of significant decisions were, uh, were taken. But soon after that, uh, uh, we saw when it came to the implementation of those decisions that things were starting to fall apart. And you yourself, uh, um, uh, Igli, you, you mentioned the last uh, political statement in 2002. Uh, so the space in the OSC had become uh, fragmented and then within that space, we saw increasingly uh, confrontation and differences. Uh, the OSC struggled to recognize that. Uh, uh, the fact that uh, chairmanships uh, since 2002 have always tried to get a political statement and always uh, have been frustrated with that shows that uh, nobody has really accepted that there, is, uh, that there is a division and tried to build on the uh, and to work on the basis of, uh, of the concept of divisions. Uh, and in fact, I might add on the issue of, uh, of uh, the commitments that very often the conflicts and these divisions and this confrontation on, uh, on issues uh, became uh, a pretext or a justification for violations of, uh, uh, of some of the key principles of the organization. Even today, we uh, see that we, we have problems and often the, the, uh, uh, the people in, involved in these problems point outside their borders and say this is happening because you know, others are interfering in, uh, in, in what is going on. Now, the, the OSC uh, has been built also to operate in, uh, in a confrontational space. And I think we should uh, squarely face this uh, and, and try to make the most of it. I can put forward examples in, in a couple of capacities that I played within the OSC uh, of, of very successful engagement in the OSC. The, back to when I was in the CPC, back in Ukraine in 2004, where I remember going to Kiev and uh, preparing the ground for a visit to the Secretary General, my job was was to try to engage with the presidential administration at a time when the presidential administration did not want to engage with the international community. And I met with the opposition, I met with ministers, including Minister of Interior on the use of police, etc. In the end, we got this meeting and uh, uh, Secretary General Kubis came to Kiev. Uh, we started uh, and we were part of a larger group of international community uh, around a, a series of uh, roundtables 
uh, uh, and the conclusion was uh, a repeat of the elections with a strong monitoring by, uh, by Odir. And uh, so the OSC had a key role in that. And, if, and the result was that the opposition won and then uh, the, the situation became stable, but in a way that was not too traumatic. Uh, the following year I was in Kyrgyzstan and uh, again, something similar to things I've seen in, in, in recent days. And we were the ones who were supposed to have a meeting with President Akayev when the presidential palace was stormed and Akayev had to flee the country. We didn't make it uh, like we did in Ukraine uh, to, to stabilize the situation at that point, but I remained in the country for 10 days. And we developed a plan of support of Kyrgyzstan with uh, in full engagement with the international community and key stakeholders. Uh, and that was the beginning of a new phase, a phase with certain instability, but we avoided a major crisis and the OSCE was very much part of that process. When I came back as Secretary General, uh, well, obviously Ukraine is, uh, is the, the, the most visible example. Uh, I, I remember the first phase uh, um, uh, with the Swiss chairmanship, very engaged on this issue uh, and in full agreement with that, we were trying to establish a contact group on Ukraine. I, I remember traveling uh, um, uh, to, to propose this, this creation early in the year I still remember one day when I had breakfast in Moscow, lunch in Berlin and dinner in London. And after that, uh, a BBC interview at the evening news. And, and we were trying to uh, push the, the key interlocutors uh, to, to really get, get together and create some kind of a mechanism to support uh, Ukraine in this difficult transition. And, uh, and in the end, this materialized with the Normandy because of the French, uh, the French initiative on that. Uh, uh, but then SMM and SMM was the other, uh, I think, major, no, no other organization, not even the UN managed to engage in that space where the OSC did. So that was a strong, uh, um, I think, a strong demonstration of uh, the ability of an organization like this to insert itself, uh, because it's inclusive, to insert itself in, in, uh, in a difficult space where, uh, for others. Another thing I remember from Secretary General uh, is the facilitation. This was very tricky politically. Facilitation of uh, uh, Serbian elections in Kosovo, uh, where I myself had to engage with leadership in Kosovo and uh, in Pristina and in Belgrade uh, to agree on the modalities for this, because of course, uh, some wanted to see them uh, treated as elections abroad and others obviously didn't, depending on the status position. And the OSC facilitated that and we managed to make sure that the issue of what kind of elections are these never really appeared and so the elections could uh, could take place so the, the osc has this ability and this capacity of inserting itself there and this is what i would like to see today why is this not happening today with so many crises that we have around and my answer is that there is lack of political support and lack of political uh, uh, attention this is where we i think the, f the first place where we need uh, uh, to to re-engage uh, is is at this level uh, so this is also part of my job with the Parliamentary Assembly, trying to uh, uh, build this uh, political support. We're working uh, now on a project of a manifesto involving uh, the former leaders of the organization, uh, chairman in office, uh, the heads of institutions, uh, presidents of Parliamentary Assembly, all together, uh, spending a word um, uh, in favor of the organization and using the anniversary <coughs> of, the, of the Charter of Paris. We'll see if we manage also to mark the anniversary with the parliamentary assembly with an event uh, uh, in Paris, could be an online event, but we'll keep you informed on that. Uh, but to, to uh, uh, really uh, underline, uh, underline this, there is uh, a need for a stronger investment at the political level in the organization. Uh, the ministers are too aloof in a way. Uh, also, uh, the crisis on the, on the leadership, if I may, uh, it has been dealt in Vienna, but ministers really didn't pay attention to it. There should have been a ministerial council uh, um, decision of some kind. Uh, there was nothing. Uh, ministers didn't really uh, engage directly uh, other than through by, you know, bilateral engagements uh, with, the, with the chairmanship. Um, and ministers, in fact, were the ones who made these appointments possible in the beginning, because otherwise uh, these wouldn't have happened, which shows that when ministers engage, things get done. Uh, so we need to find ways to bring uh, the political attention uh, back, uh, back on the table to support the organization. Um, the, the, it is difficult to raise the profile of the organization if the organization does not engage on key current political issues. 
and, uh, uh, and it, it boils down to that. Otherwise, the organization is bound to, uh, uh, to slide into, into oblivion. And there's too much uh, uh, navel gazing in this, in this moment, as I see discussions on uh, issues that are you know, management related. Uh, uh, and, and, uh, and this sometimes also uh, complicates the way it's there. Take, take the scales of contribution to, men to mention one, and we're talking Charter of Paris. The Charter of Paris is setting scales of contribution itself. And, uh, and uh, uh, it's setting it in a way that it shows how political they are. It is a political decision. Certain countries wanted to play a strong political role and wanted to contribute more because of, uh, of their political role. If this has to change, you need a political decision, first of all. This is not technical. Uh, uh, so this has to go at that level. Uh, so you need to engage ministers, and maybe at some point you will need a summit that would, would have to be prepared through ministerial uh, decisions, through ministerial engagements. So on the parliamentary side, we'll try to uh, uh, involve politicians to try to uh, push them uh, to raise uh, the, the, the level and the attention uh, for the issue of the organization at, uh, uh, at the political. I'll, I'll stop at this, but I'll be happy to elaborate more on various points during the discussion. Thank you.